Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Jesse Lingard is leaving Manchester United. According to a report by the Sunday Mirror, West Ham are planning to make a £15 million bid for Lingard. Everton are also planning an offer. We did want £25 million for Jesse Lingard. Now a few weeks ago, West Ham's first team coach, Stuart Pearce, said that West Ham want to sign Jesse Lingard and he mentioned that he's a special lad. Romano said not so long ago though that West Ham were going to submit another bid. The other week, Solskjaer confirmed that Jesse Lingard remains part of his first team plans for this season, despite the ongoing speculation. Last season, Lingard endured a four-month loan spell with West Ham, and he made an impact. Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next year. So obviously it would make sense to cash in for him now rather than risk letting him go on a three. The Lingard has been part of the club for a long time, risen up our academy. Uh, Man United has won the FA Cup, the Charity Shield, the Europa League and the EFL Cup and he's scored in some of them finals. And Lingard's had quite a few loan spells though. He had loan spell with Leicester, Birmingham, Brighton, Derby and West Ham. Uh, not so long ago, Lingard did have COVID. Now, Solskjaer has a title winning squad. There's no time for any excuses now Manchester United re-signed Cristiano Ronaldo after 12 years Manchester United will pay Cristiano Ronaldo, £6 million a year. It's less than his Juventus wage. So Ronaldo has agreed a salary cut, but still will be the highest earner at Old Trafford. The Ronaldo deal is subject to a medical, the personal terms and the visa. Man United agreed a fee with Juventus. We've paid 12.8 million up front. Um, Add-ons are included so it rises up to like 19.8 million. Ronaldo will sign a two-year contract with Man United with an option of a further year and he will receive £480,000 a week. In Solskjaer's press conference, building up to the game against Wolves, he made a public plea for Cristiano Ronaldo to rejoin. Don't forget, Ronaldo left Juventus training. He was there for around 40 minutes, but he made it clear to Juventus that he wanted to leave. But I'm very, very surprised that Ronaldo's come back to Man United, and I think a lot of United fans are shocked. Because Man City were the favourites to sign him and Man City held talks with Cristiano Ronaldo's agent, George Mendes. But Man City ended up pulling out of the race 
surprisingly. But the reason Man City went in for Ronaldo is because they couldn't get Harry Kane because Harry Kane is staying at Tottenham. Ronaldo is regarded as the best player in the world. He's won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Now, in Ronaldo's first spell at Manchester United, he scored 118 goals in 292 games in all competitions. And he won three Premier Leagues, he won the Champions League, he won the FA Cup, he won a couple of League Cups, and he won the FIFA Club World Cup. In Ronaldo's first spell, he endured six years at Man United. We got him from Sporting Lisbon in 2003 for £12 million. And we sold him to Real Madrid in 2009 for £80 million. He endured like 10 years with Real Madrid. And then Juventus got him in 2018 for £88 million. He endured three years at Juventus. His current contract at Juventus was due to expire next year. I'm expecting Ronaldo to play against Newcastle after the international break. Because it did say he won't be playing for another, what, two weeks. But Ronaldo is our fourth signing of this summer transfer window. Jaden Sancho. He's also good. I think he's going to do well at Manchester United, providing that Solskjaer uses him right. I'm expecting Sancho to make his first start today against Wolves. Sancho didn't start last weekend against Southampton. I don't understand why. You know, a lot of United fans criticised Solskjaer for not starting Sancho, but he did come on against Southampton. Sancho to Man United was confirmed on the 23rd of July. We got him in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. Sancho's under contract with Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a further year. But at Man United, I'm convinced he'll replicate what he did in his four years with Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Varane, he's regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a fantastic pedigree as a player because Varane won a lot of trophies at Real Madrid. I'm expecting Varane to make his debut today against Wolves. Uh, Varane didn't play any part against Southampton last weekend. Uh, Varane to Man United was official on the opening day against Leeds just before kick-off. Uh, we got Varane in a deal worth £43 million, uh, with add-ons included. Man United paid like £34 million up front and Varane signed a four-year contract with Man United with an option of a further year. Varane is wearing the number 19 shirt. But what a fantastic centre-back partnership that is, Varane and Harry Maguire, because they'll complement each other well. But Varane did enjoy 10 years with Real Madrid, so he was a long-serving player for them. You know, he made over 360 appearances in all competitions, and his current contract at Real Madrid was due to expire next year. Uh, Tom Eaton, you know, he's a decent goalkeeper. Obviously, Man United brought Tom Eaton in as a backup. To his credit, he did very, very well in pre-season. We got Tom Eaton on a free. He's got a contract with Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. 
Um, Dean Henderson, you know, he's a very, very good goalkeeper. Dean Henderson has been unavailable because he's been recovering from COVID. Dean Henderson is close to returning now. Uh, Henderson did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. Plus, he's got that experience behind him because he enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield. He's also had other loan spells before. Before the start of last season, Dean Henderson signed a six-year contract with Man United, so reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. I still highly rate David De Gea, despite him making a lot of mistakes in the last couple of years. De Gea has obviously been in goal for our first two league games. Um, he's going to be in goal today against Wolves. De Gea didn't really have much to do in our first two league games. You know, against Southampton, made a good save to deny Adam Armstrong. Also, made a save to deny James Ward-Prowse from that free kick. And he made a couple of saves in the opening game against Leeds to deny... Jack Harrison and Click. This is De Gea's 11th season at Man United. He's been a long servant at the club. He's endured 10 years at Man United. He's been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. A few years ago, David De Gea was regarded as the best goalkeeper in the world. He's won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. You know, De Gea has, what, two years left on his contract and he receives £375,000 a week. But we know the highest staying at Man United for this season because earlier on in the summer, De Gea decided to cut short his holiday by two weeks to fight for the starting place and he said he was determined to fight for his future. Luke Shaw. He's a very, very good left-back. I think he's going to enjoy a good season. He's had a good start to this season already and Shaw was absolutely superb last season. In fact, he was the best left-back in the Premier League. I think we are in the process of extending Luke Shaw's contract. I think Shaw's got under two years left on his current contract. Shaw's been our first-choice left-back for a while. He still remains our first choice left back despite the arrival of Alex Tellez last year. Shaw's had a good career at Man United despite his injuries and Shaw's been at Man United now for like seven years so he's been a long serving player. Um, I think Harry Maguire is a decent centre half and like I've said we should get the best out of him now with Varane alongside him. Maguire's had his good games at Man United, he's also had his bad games. Towards the end of last season, Maguire was a big miss for us because he had ligament damage in his ankle. We overpaid for Maguire though, we got him in a deal worth £80 million, Most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. You know, you've got Eric Bailly, good centre-half. Um, it said earlier on in the summer that Eric Bailly's future is in doubt. Uh, following the arrival of Raphael Varane. But I think we should keep Bailly as a backup. So if Varane or Harry Maguire get injured, then Bailly's the plan B. I know Lindelof's also a backup, but I prefer Bailly to Lindelof. Towards the end of last season, Bailly signed a new contract with Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. Bailly's injury prone, so that's my element of concern about him. We got a buy from Villarreal back in 2016 for 30 million. Buy's been unavailable recently due to personal reasons.
Anwan Bissaka, you know, he's a very, very good right back. He's probably the best right back we've had since Gary Neville. I can assure Anwan Bissaka's got a long term future at Man United. Defensively, he's always been superb. There's still some aspects of his game that I've got to improve. improve. He's got to show more attacking intent. He's got to improve his crossing, I'd say. So there you go. This is Anwan Bissaka's third full season at Man United. You know, we got him in a deal worth 50 million from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019. We've got Paul Pogba, that's good. He's enjoyed a very good start to this season. Pogba's already got five assists. And he did well in the last couple of months of last season, but at one point last season, he was out with a thigh injury for a while and Pogba sustained some ankle injuries at Man United. Pogba is expected to stay at Man United for at least this season. Now, Marcia recently said that Paul Pogba told his agent that he wants to play for Real Madrid and he will not extend his contract with Man United and will leave for free in 2022. Now, the other week, Solskjaer did mention that talks are ongoing with Pogba's representatives to persuade Pogba to sign a new Man United contract. Solskjaer did mention that he's not worried about Pogba's contract situation. The Athletic came out and said that Man United was set to make Pogba the highest paid player at the club with a new five-year contract worth £400,000 a week, or should I say now second highest paid, because obviously Ronaldo is obviously the highest earner. But that obviously came out before the news came out about Ronaldo. Uh, Pogba receives two hundred and ninety grand a week at the moment on his current contract. His current contract expires next summer. Well, Sky Sports did mention not so long ago that Pogba is very likely to leave Man United on the free next summer, when his contract expires. And he actually said he's set to join PSG on a three. Because PSG are pushing to sign him next summer. And PSG are prepared to offer Pogba £510,000 a week in wages. To prize him away from Man United. PSG getting Pogba this summer hit a stumbling block. As PSG got Lionel Messi. But Paul Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. Um, before the start of the season, Sky Sports came out and said that Pogba sees a long-term future at Man United, but may wait on the contract extension. And Before the start of the season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract. Sky Sports came out and said that Pogba was increasingly unlikely to sign a new Man United contract. Solskjaer revealed that he had positive talks with Pogba over his future before the game, start of the season. And the Telegraph mentioned that Pogba would start the season with Man United, then he'd make a decision about his future before the 31st of August. And, um, yeah, in the first two games, we've played Pogba in more of an advanced role, you know, on that left-hand side. And I'm expecting him to play on that left-hand side today against Wolves. He's very effective there, but he can also play well in a deep a role. Scott McTominay, you know, he's a decent player. Obviously not yet on that level where I want him to be at. McTominay needs more time at the club. He's been part of the club for a long time as it stands. McTominay is out with a groin injury at the moment. He will not be playing today against Wolves. Just after the first lockdown last year, McTominay signed a five-year contract with Man United. So, reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. And Donny van der Beek, he's good. But you know what? I haven't really had much of a perception on him at Man United. Because he hasn't been given enough game time. 
And there's a good chance Van der Beek will leave if he's not getting enough game time. You know, this is Van der Beek's second full season at Man United. You know, last season Van der Beek made 36 appearances for us in all competitions, but most of them appearances came from the bench. I recall Van der Beek starting just four games in the league last season. You know, we got Van der Beek in a deal worth 40 million for my axe. With add-ons included, he's got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. And he's versatile, he can play in three different roles. Bruno Fernandes, he's a world-class player, you know, one of our best players and one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Bruno Fernandes weren't too good against Southampton last weekend, pretty average performance, but he was good on the opening day against Leeds because he got his first Manchester United hat-trick. You know, in most of Bruno Fernandes' games at Man United, he's been very consistent, but there's also been quite a few games where he's looked off the pace. Bruno Fernandes has been at Man United over a year and a half now. Last season, he won Player of the Year, and he's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. Bruno Fernandes does not want to leave the club. He's happy to stay at Old Trafford as contract talks go on. Bruno Fernandes has got a contract with Man United till 2025. There's an option of a further year. And we brought Bruno Fernandes in from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Bruno Fernandes predominantly plays as a number 10. Obviously, he'll be playing today against Wolves. Uh, we got Mason Greenwood. That's very, very good. You know, he's done, he's had a good start this season as well. You know, scored the equalising goal against Southampton last weekend, scored on the opening day against Leeds. Should have had a couple of more against Leeds, to be honest with you, because he had two good early chances. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, and last season, Greenwood signed a new four year contract. You know, you can play Greenwood up top, you can play him on the right, you can play him on the left, but wherever you seem to play him, you seem to get the best out of him. I don't think he's too good though on the left, if I'm going to be honest with you. He's much better on the right or centre than he is on the left. Uh, Edison Cavani, you know, he's made an impact since he's come in. Cavani's been unavailable recently, is it due to personal reasons? Uh, Cavani will be leaving Manchester United after this season. You've got Marcus Rashford, that's also good when he wants to be, but Rashford has enjoyed his bad periods at Man United. He was certainly out of form towards the end of last season. And he's become injury prone, which is a concern. Rashford has got a shoulder injury now, he's out until October. Earlier on in the summer, Rashford decided to have surgery on his shoulder. But when Rashford comes back, I think we need to keep him on that left-hand side because that's where he seems to be more effective. So there you go. We've got a good squad. Um, earlier on today, I gave you the news on Emad Diallo. Uh, Fabrizio Romano's come out and said that Emad Diallo is close to signing for Fernard on loan until the end of the season. Solskjaer confirmed that Ahmad Diallo is going out on loan. But Fabrizio Romano said not so long ago that Ahmad Diallo is still expected to leave Man United on loan and he mentioned that Crystal Palace and Sheffield United had asked for him but he said he was only interested in Premier League clubs. Well, before the Southampton game the other week, uh, Solskjaer actually said he expected him had Dilo to stay at Man United for this season because he mentioned that he was impressed with him in training. 
We've got Ahmad Diallo in a deal worth 37 million. With add-ons included. Man United paid 19 million up front. You know the news on Daniel James. Uh, Man United have decided to let Daniel James go out on loan. Uh, reflecting on the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo. A few clubs want Daniel James. Everton want him. Brighton want him. Palace want him. And Leeds want him. Don't forget, Leeds were extremely close to getting Daniel James back in January 2019. Daniel James doesn't really get in our team. You know, we got Daniel James in a deal worth £15 million from Swansea back in the summer of 2019. And James has got a contract with Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. You know, as you all know, Man United have not sold one single player in this summer transfer window, surprisingly. But we have loaned quite a few players out. You know, we loaned Brandon Williams out to Norwich. We loaned Axel Tuanzebi out to Villa. We loaned Andres Pereira out to Flamengo. We loaned Ethan Laird out to Swansea. We loaned Tahith Chong out to Birmingham. And we loaned Facundo Pelistri out to Alaves. And the other week, Solskjaer got warned he needs to sell to buy. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you for today. Beyond from match reaction later on, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.